Um, sure, I guess I can. Um, so Nikolai and I had actually just kind of met and talked about, obviously, it's a, an interesting market out there. And he's been incredibly successful at doing off markets. Um, and there's some important points, I think, that he's brought up uh, in conversations uh, that we've had about how to set the expectation for not just the buyer, but also sellers um, and, and what it takes to, to prep a seller, to be able to give them options, to know if it's something that is a positive for them. Um, but as well as with buyers too, how do you set that expectation? So you don't have buyers coming in and lowballing off markets. Um, one, you're, you're making the sellers upset Two, Um, it's just not, uh, it's not good practice, um, agent to agent. So, uh, having the conversation with your buyer as well, that if we're going to go on an off market, what does that look like? Um, and what does the conversation look like prior to prepping those offers? Um, did I kind of do a, a rough yeah. kind of concept on that? It, it, I, I think what happens here is there's a transition between the traditional going active uh, timeline, which everybody should be, you know, very comfortable with. And there are some, there's certain things set in place. And I feel like that when it's an off market uh, opportunity, though, some of those rigid um, guidelines can be softened a little bit to benefit both sides. So um, it's a great opportunity. And I think that if, if what I think the goal, my goal for this round table would be if everyone involved can leave this with the idea that um, we can, we can make it what we want and we can take this opportunity for this, whatever potential transaction and make it a beautiful thing for all sides. Um, it's a great opportunity and still obviously holding our uh, fiduciary duties uh, at the top. You know, like, obviously that's first and foremost. Um, I kind of was in, in my, uh, my notes here, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, what's the goal of this, this round table? It's how do we maximize an off-market opportunity while still maintaining our fiduciary responsibilities, um, especially in a, in a dual agency scenario, right? It's, it's, that's very important. So, um, I, and, and you set the stage perfectly. It's all about setting expectations. Um, we've got expectations that start with the seller we have expectations with the buyers and we have expectations of the other agent. You know, for some buyers, this might be the only time that they even have a chance at getting a property. Let's say FHA buyers or VA buyers, you know, um, it's pretty dire out there for them right now. Um, and this is a great opportunity. And all it takes is maybe just a little bit of extra work from us agents, you know, cause it's, it is extra work. It's, it's not just sitting back and letting your, your buyers throw properties at you to go take showing at. Um, uh, I have done this quite a bit, and I, I'm certainly not uh, a seasoned agent that's been around as, as most of you, but um, I have had a tremendous amount of success in the way that I've done it because it's been a very open conversation, um, and that starts with the listing presentation. So um, I, I think what I'll do is maybe start this, this roundtable just by explaining how I've done it and then open it up for conversation. Does that work for... Yeah. Can you give us a little background on what your success was last year? I mean, I think you had yeah. told me 13 of your deals alone yeah. were off market. So, um, I mean, it is a, it's a, a quite a big chunk of, of what your business is, um, is doing this as well. Oh, I did, I did 50 transactions last year and 17 of them were off market. And this year I've done 16 and, uh, nine of them have been off market deals. Um, it, here's why I, I, I do that is because it's um, it's getting my buyers and my sellers what they want if done correctly. And it's a, the timeline is shortened. You know, how awesome is that? Like, I'll show you enough properties where you feel confident enough to go after an off market property and vice versa. You know, like if you do your job, I think it's like there's 20 steps in every sales process and 19 of them are preparation. Right. So you start that off with the listing presentation, because it always starts with the list side. So I go into my listing presentation and I talk about timeline. And, and uh, right before the coming soon is a step called office exclusive. And you talk about this um, real quick, certainly don't want to say that this is part of everyone's timeline, but this might be something for you. 
I do a soft touch on it. I talk about some successes in that. And I say, let's talk about that later. It's not for everybody, right? You go through the rest of it. You talk about how you strategically market your marketing plan for whatever pricing. You know, I like to maybe go active slightly below market value, whatever your, your plan is. And then maybe at the end, you come back and you say, now, I want to touch on that off-market opportunity. Um, what is most important oh, no. to you as a seller? right? I mean, that's what we really want to get down to. If the most important thing to you is, is netting the most for your property, let's talk about what that looks like going active. And let's talk about what that might look like going off market, right? When I do a follow-up after the listing presentation, I send them the estimated net sheet and I have three columns. I've got the first column that has the price that will probably go active at, or at least what I'm suggesting. The second column in the middle is going to be what I, I hope to to get you from a sales or offer price going active. And the third one off market is what we call stars in your eyes pricing, right? Top, top, top. It would be awesome if we got that. And uh, if you got that, would you just walk away and be happy and never look over your shoulder? So that's kind of my mindset. And again, I reiterate, like this isn't for everybody. You know, I, I, I it's very transparent. What I want from you as a seller is, to be so happy with the outcome that obviously you refer me in the future and you know and you have no regrets right that's always the outcome so if set up properly and they make the decision every step of the way it's a great great outcome um and then on the buy side same thing you know like they always ask me why is this person selling off market you know well they they've decided what's most important to them they've laid it out for us and if we would like to match what's most important to them they're going to be extremely happy with you and it, it carries out. And so both sides are, are happy because they know the deal going in. Um, and this is just what's worked well for me. Uh, and then the same thing with the other agent, I'll be honest. Um, it's more work for the agents doing an off market deal. It's, it's more work on both sides. And sometimes, you know, which I guess can happen in any transaction, the one agent might be doing a little bit more work than the other, but it's a constant reminder of what you had, a handshake deal on some of the terms. But again, if, if you lay it all out in the beginning, up front in the preparation, setting expectations down to as, as finite as listing out every term before you even step foot in that, in that off-market property, then there isn't going to be any bumps or there'll be minimal bumps. So um, that's the way I've done it. I, I literally would almost send over like a verbal offer, you know, beforehand to the listing agent saying, am I correct in assuming that this would get the deal done? Um, just so I know everything going in and they've been great. I don't know if Shannon Plurid is on. Uh, I, we've she had some is. great conversations. I, I And Shannon's, uh, she's been around a lot longer than me and, and um, I would love to have her point of view kind of chime in. Hello. Hi, Shannon. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I think that I have kind of been approaching this market in the very same way, Nikolai, that you have with sellers and with buyers. Um, you know, I think that um, quite honestly. Um, going through the market, in, you know, in 2008, nine and 10, it was kind of the reverse, right? It was trying to find mm -hmm. buyers that were willing to put pen to paper. And so it was a lot of networking. I feel like, you know, the conversation you and I had a couple of weeks ago was really not uh, undervaluing the power of our network. And our network is with other agents, whether they be agents in our office, agents in Keller Williams or agents at, other brokerages. So I guess, you know, that's one thing that I've been focusing on quite a bit um, is doing a lot of networking, um, but then also just being sure that, you know, you mentioned this, but that we're educating our clients on really what the options are and what the market looks like right now. And then ultimately they decide. But what, you know, the other part of it is, is I don't care which way you're going, whether you're putting it on the market and you're collecting, you know, 10, 20, 30 offers, or you are selling it off market. It's all a lot of work right now. <laughs> There's nothing that's yeah. easy right now. <laughs> yeah. 
staying home, I guess, is easy. <laughs> Um, I guess I have a question for you, Nikolai, that we talked about when you're setting the stage. And I, I think Susan also had a question right now. You're talking about agent to agent off markets, like another agent listing the property, a buyer being represented as well. Is that correct? Yep. Um, because do you, you know, I know that I, when I was selling kind of set up the, if I found a property unrepresented is different than what you're talking about currently. Is that correct? I'm talking about another property that is already under contract. Yeah. Yeah. So the, okay. the, the property available is under contract with somebody. It, it might be me. I have, I, I see Susan's questions and I, I have, um, done both sides. Um, and, and I've, I've made that work. I, I feel like it, it's kind of the same process where it's an open conversation. Um, you know, I describe the dual agency. I describe, uh, what's most important to the sellers, to the buyers. Right. And I say, this is something that I can pretty much slam dunk for you if you agree. And then they say, well, why are they doing this? What's the, the, the mentality? And I get permission from the sellers to say that and I pass it on and I say, yeah, this, you know, it's quite simple. They don't want a bunch of people through their home for an open house or they've got uh, certain expectations for closing dates. I know um, contingent upon the sellers finding the home of their choice. I mean, you pretty much and, I, and believe me, you know, you, you tell sellers this like you can have anything you want. Um, we can tell them that um, here's the price, which is 50 grand over market. Um, we also want you to have no inspection. We want you to cover any appraisal gap. And it wants, we want you to be contingent upon us finding a home. If you'll literally give us that, yeah, we won't go to this crazy market. We'll give it to you off market. And if, if a buyer agrees to that, great. Everybody wins. Everyone's on the same side. Everyone's super happy about it. And, you know, you just make sure that you check with them throughout the process. Everything going okay? You happy? You good with this? You know, it's, it can be great. So what I'm hearing is that's almost like a reverse offer, almost like if exactly. I get this, 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 and this, we will sell this property off market. Is that kind of the, the approach that you're taking on it? From a buyer's agent point of view, that is exactly what I would like to see. Okay. Um, because then there's no, you know, that's setting expectations for the agent too, right? Because I in turn have to go and tell them how this works. And unless I know all the elements, I can't set my expectations with my buyer. So, you know, it, it starts with the, the, the seller. It starts with the listing and you walk them through that. And, you know, it's evolved in the last year because we didn't have things like contingent upon the sellers finding a house and covering any appraisal gap. You know what I mean? Like all of these additional line items, which I guess now are standard, you know, we've all seen it. Um, you know, eight out of nine offers that uh, have no inspection. Um, it's crazy, but that's a, a fact now. So you ask for it up front, you, you literally reverse offer it, you put it out there. And, um, you know, let's say that, let's say you put it out there and you get 10 people coming back to you. You're the listing agent and you're the one who's the buffer. Um, you can make a decision and, and pick one. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, you ask your, your sellers if that's okay. Um, and you go with somebody who you have a good track record with, who understands the process, um, who you feel most confident in. It's like picking a, a, an offer based on a lender. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it all can work out wonderfully. I did three deals with the same agent last year, all off market. And we, we <clears throat> our first call is to each other, right? So it's wonderful. So when you go, when you do the, when you do these off markets and at any point in time, this is a, a round table, like anyone can ask questions. So, uh, pipe in, um, when you do this, do you ask for those terms before you go into the house so that when you're looking at the home, right? Cause that's also a thing is when you're looking at it, you can say, okay, I would be confident offering this, or do you ask for those, um, parameters after showing the house? Um, this has also changed recently. Obviously the reason we're having this, this round table is because it's, it's, um, it's sticky out there and also with dual agency and we, uh, you know, John Butler wants us to actually have an addendum in these purchase agreements now that, or something in writing, always a good idea to get something in writing that everyone understands. Right. Um, so in the beginning or when I first started doing them, you know, I just wanted to know the price. Hey, what's the price to get it done? Um, now that we have these other terms, 
I want the deal to, to go through. So I'm asking more questions just to make sure that the other agent has asked all the questions, you know, like, oh no, we just assumed you knew it was no inspection. Well, let's just get it all out up front, right? Um, I'm still, I'm still fighting for the fiduciary responsibilities of my buyer if I'm just on the buy side and, you know, but also I want the, I want the transaction to be as smooth as possible and I don't want any surprises. So why not just ask for it up front? You know, I've done off market deals recently. That's still allowed an inspection. That was great. I really appreciated that. And there's a lot of goodwill going back and forth, you know, and uh, even more so in an off market deal, it's a lot of goodwill. Um, and if done right, you know, I think that the sellers have even more leverage. I think that um, if there is an inspection period, the buyers take it really easy on them because they feel very fortunate for the opportunity. Um, so it, it can be a win-win for, for everybody. Awesome. Uh, uh, I can talk about, Susan asked if I've, if I've done um, the deal on both sides. I have, it's, it's just, um, you know, just transparency both ways. Um, you, obviously you have to earn the trust of the buyers. You have to have your buyers educated enough to know that it's tough out there. I, I don't know if I would throw them into an off-market deal without having missed out on one or two, or at least gone on a handful of showings. And so they, they understand the state of the market first. I think that's a, a possible uh, pitfall there if, if they don't really understand. That would, so. that would be my only concern in rent, representing both sides. If the buyers got into the house and then, you know, maybe they didn't have an inspection, maybe they did, you know, it just seems like there's kind of, you know, opportunity to kind of get bit in the ass a little bit. Yeah, and that's gonna happen on any time at school agency. Um, but again, you just voice your concerns out loud, right? I mean, you can't over communicate. You just say, look, hey, it, I, this is risky. Do you feel like you are confident enough with the market have we been in enough homes in this neighborhood at this price point for you to recognize a home that you're excited about? You know, I don't want you to buy this home just because it's an off market deal. I want you to be excited about the house. So. On an off note, Nikolai, yep. I like my new neighbors a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm glad, you know, what's funny about that. So yeah, that I, I sold, uh, I listed and sold an off-market property next to Susan and another agent in our office brought the, the buyers and it was a great transaction. And yeah, that's funny. Awesome. Um, another question was uh, when the buyer, like when you have an off-market and you're probably hogging some of those deals, how are you finding these properties? Um, it's hustle. Like I said before, um, I don't, I, there's opportunity out there. Uh, I have a list of agents that I call um, outside of the brokerage and we have conversations. Um, I do use 400 doors. I do use our Facebook groups. Um, I do use our, our new um, Excel sheet that uh, the Integrity Lakes office has been doing. Um, I think we're working on one for the all four Butler offices. So it is kind of a pain. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but I'm hustling. I mean, last year I went and door knocked a house that had been listed in the past that was then expired and um, they were very apprehensive and I brought buyers to them and I just told them I'll get the deal done and do both sides and it worked great. It was one of the best transactions. So hustle, really. Can we also talk uh, about that a little bit in regards to going to say that you're gonna get the deal done? Um, you can't just say that, right? There has to be a level of knowledge and confidence in that piece um, so that you know, you're know you really going to. And I think that goes back to, you know being in the market, making sure that you know what's expected on the sell and the buy side. Absolutely. Um, it's the dual agency thing. You really, uh, I was having a great conversation with Tim Sopral and he's unable to make this call, but he was saying that what he likes to do in the listing agreement is put the off market price down in the agreement as the top dollar, right? Just to cover himself. I think it's a great idea. Um, or you could write it in you know, write in your intentions. Um, you can't document it too much. I, I, I like my way of, of sending the net sheet with an explanation and an email that I can refer back to like, hey, remember we talked about this. Um, so it's just communication and setting expectations. I, I'd also like to add, uh, first off, uh, Nikolai, thank you. All, all the points you brought up were fantastic. I really liked it. A um, uh, lot of really good stuff, but Billy Pauling here for those of you who don't know me and I, uh, 
I'm one of the co-founders of 400 Doors. And when it comes to, you know, trying to find these deals, I think 400 Doors is great. We're working on improving that all the time. The other uh, success that we've had in getting deals done is using command. Um, I've had my team kind of organize a bunch of agents that are doing business at, in certain areas at certain dollar amounts. And when we have a buyer need, we're adding it to 400 Doors. We're networking it on our Facebook groups. And then I'm using uh, command smart plans to send out text messages to agents in those areas and those price points. And we're getting having success with that as well. So that's been a really big, great uh, breakthrough for us. Um, and uh, if I could just add to uh, some of your comments as well, Nikolai, is that, um, yeah, I think if you're a buyer's agent uh, and you're getting an opportunity for an off-market deal and your buyer's educated on what's going on with the market, man, don't mess around at all. With, uh, with the deal, make it as clean as possible because it really is a win for your buyer as it can be a win for the seller if they're getting a great price for the property. Um, and, and, and if you're a seller, just make sure you're getting those clean, uh, those clean deals uh, uh, and, and at a great price points as well. So um, I guess that's all I've got on my end. Just wanted to add that little bit. Thank you. Yeah, I think that in, a, in an off-market situation, our role kind of shifts a little bit. And, you know, when we're representing a seller, it's our job to tell them what's happening in the market and what they should expect. When, I'd rather have it come from me than their neighbor, right? Like the nightmare in this situation is if somebody sells something off-market, I've got a listing off-market in YZ right now that's been off-market for a month or two, and it's probably priced a little high, and that's why it's still for sale. But... What if they sold it and um, their closing date is, is ideally out in October, right? So what if it, a neighbor's house sold for more during that time? That would be bad. You know, I would look bad. And so I, I tell them all the time, I say, listen, you have to make sure that you are comfortable with this. Otherwise, let's just go active. And I say it almost on a weekly basis, honestly. You know, it, as long as you communicate and make the decision theirs the entire time, and I tell them repeatedly, you can change your mind at any time, guys. If you want to change this off market price or if you want to take it down or if you don't want me to sell it off market, we don't have to. Not a big deal. It's a crazy market out there. There's there's news articles printed all the time. You know, everybody knows. So as long as they are given the choice and repeatedly given the choice so that it doesn't catch them off guard, you'll be okay. There are a few questions in here. I'll, I'll just kind of read off. Um, can you talk about a seller accepting an FHA offer and what that looks like? Um, again, you know, if it's an open conversation, you just tell them, hey, here's the differences with an FHA offer. Now, what I think is the beauty of this, um, this potential deal is if you're not active, you're not coming soon, you could actually work through that before you even lose any days on market, right? So, um, it actually isn't that big of a risk for a seller. And maybe that buyer writes them a, a nice letter and says, look, this is our situation. If you would give us a shot, I don't see why not. And I would love uh, anyone else to chime in. Am I missing some, some, some pitfalls here? Um, but I'm not scared of FHA in the off market. I did some uh, in the last year mm -hmm. and it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if anybody else is having success, I know we're all kind of on here and, and Nikolai is doing an amazing job, but if anyone's had successes, um, please share those or ideas. Um, again, it's, it's kind of everybody, everybody kind of chiming in on, on positive things that they've seen happen, uh, in a, you know, in off market deals. Uh, I'll add to that. Um, I think uh, it's interesting in how we can get these deals done, but it's all about trying to find these deals. It's challenging. Um, so we've had success with, I mentioned uh, the command using smart plans to send out text messages. Um, we've also had success using 400 doors. Uh, no sh a shameless plug there, there but uh, that's been successful. Posting buyer needs. Um, other, you might not find pre-listings, but when you post your buyer needs and you share those buyer needs out with your sphere, a other agents will reach out to you with potentials, right? So um, th that's finding a way that we've had some success. Uh, and then door knocking expired. So we just closed one last week doing, doing that. So um, uh, that's how we've been able to find them. And that's been our, 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 our I think our three most recent um, ways to have success with that. 
Can you explain a little bit more about how you're using these SMART plans um, in regards to what you're sending and then how you're researching these agents? Yeah, absolutely. So we just, uh, I just did a um, search, searches for agents that have listed or represented a buyer in certain price ranges in areas that we're looking, or we have buyers actively looking. And then we basically just uh, scraped all that data so the agent's name and email, and then we uploaded it to command, we tagged it appropriately, and then we created a smart plan with Twilio, where we sent a text message out to all those agents through Twilio saying, hey, uh, Billy Pauling here, I've got a buyer need looking in this price frame, blah, blah, blah. Do you have anything? And we got a lot of responses. You know, so a lot of it was no, um, but we were getting responses and we got, you know, we got showings off of it. Um, so that's, that's what we did. We just uh, mined that data and then incorporated and, uh, uploaded it into command and then used a smart plan around it. I feel like I might've received one of those. That's why I'm asking that. Um, and, and what you did with that was, was very personalized. Like it seemed like it came from you directly to an agent or maybe that was yes. a separate one, but, um, it's, it's, it wasn't like a canned, I mean, it was obviously cause you, you repeated it, but I remember that email coming out um, as if, as if it was specific to me as an agent. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, you can take people's first names and it's just like a canned email, but it goes out. Yeah. Through text messages, which is it. Yeah. It works well. And I think, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. It does feel a little custom, right? Yeah, and, and, it totally uh, yeah. did. It didn't seem like a, it didn't seem like it was coming from just a random email. So if anyone likes this idea, you did a really nice job if they ever wanted to, you know, reach out to you. Cause I, I honestly remember that email. Awesome. All right. Anybody else have anything to add to that piece? All right. So Tim had asked, is there a downside to no inspection, like the buyer coming back after the fact with issues coming up? Um, has anything like that happened? Um, and that could be, I guess, off market. That's more of a, a general question. Maybe Tim, is that correct? Maybe Tim's not on here. Anymore. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's, uh, it's specific to this really, but yeah, it okay. could be for either. Nikolai, it could is be, there, you know, it could be anything? just sort of general. I mean, what I'm worried about, I guess, on this is if you do this off market deal, right. And there's no inspection. And that's one of the contingent or one of the, uh, you know, items that you're saying that the seller wants to do that the buyer might come back and say, Hey, well, you know, this, this came up and you guys told us that, uh, there were, you know, we had to do this deal without an inspection and then have it have it blow up in your face mm. well yeah I, and that's a risk but I, th I think we all can agree that that's popping up everywhere on active properties now otherwise it it wouldn't be a, a source of leverage so it's absolutely a conversation would i ever recommend that my buyers not get an inspection no and we have that conversation during the buyer consultation right and then we talk about the reality of the market and that you know there are some options of doing a pre-purchase inspection or you know not doing an inspection at all. And that's always gonna be their choice. But I'm on the record and I say it just like this, I officially tell you that you should get an inspection. So, you know, we can only do so much. Um, and in an off-market deal, if I'm representing the seller, you know, that's the buyer's agent's responsibility. I'm just offering up an opportunity. And on the, on the buy side, you know, sometimes you have to let your buyers do what they want. And your job is to clarify the situation and clarify the, the pros and cons and let them make the decision. Great, thanks. Um, the next question is, am I lowering my commission for off-market properties if the owner is unrepresented? Um, I, I mean, that's kind of a separate conversation. Do you ever lower your commission? Um, it's a business deal. And if the business deal makes sense, um, I like making money. So I'm not gonna say I've never, you know, lowered my commission, but um, usually I'll say, look, uh, what's, let's go back to what's most important to you. You know, we talked about this sales price and I sent you that net sheet and I could get you that net dollar amount. I'm not sure what, what's relevant about how we get there, you know? So that's, I think a different conversation, but um, I have. If I could add one piece on the commission part too. A, a there's never been a more important time to have a professional real estate agent 
on your side would be the sell side or the buy side. So if there's any uh, period in the market uh, industry or industry uh, to earn that we're earning our commission, I think it's now more than ever. And I think uh, that's part of it. And I think uh, any seller, if you bring them a real clean, great offer, uh, they're going to be happy to pay the commission. Well, and if you set it up right, right? So let's go back to the first time when you're setting expectations with your seller. So you talk about the market. You talk about what price is market value for their home. Then you talk about this is what some sellers are getting. What if I got you all that plus more money? Wouldn't that be amazing? And their eyes open up and they're like, that would be fantastic. We would do that without question right now. And then if I did bring both sides, I would deserve the full commission, right? Because I made that happen fully myself. So again, I wouldn't hide that from them. I would be completely comfortable having that conversation with them and say, why wouldn't I deserve that? Nobody else did it for you. Well, I think there could be two things with this question though, because uh, as well, when you're coming in with a buyer and the seller is unrepresented, one, how do you get paid? So like, how do you write that up? Because right, like how do you, uh, and this so, is just a question I'm guessing people have. Sure. So how I did it was I sent over a contract to the sellers and it was a one-time showing agreement that had my specific buyers listed with a commission and a price. Right. So everything is laid out. Everyone was under contract. It was all above board. Okay. Um, in that situation, when you talk about hogging the deal and then they want you to do their work as well in the, the title, or they ask you for representation, what do you do in that moment in time? Well, that was, that was part of the deal, right? Okay. So, yep. So I, I, I said, what I would like to do is handle everything on both sides. I'll do it for this total commission dollar amount. This is going to be the net. In, and this is the number that you're interested in. And I'm going to make sure that you get that. And uh, every, everything worked out great. And they wrote me a glowing review. And, and I had known them for, you know, the amount of time it took to open the door and, and talk to them and set up some showings and some inspections. You know, they were very happy. Awesome. Um, the, this last one here, uh, would it be better to have a house on market first so that they can see what the market will bear? Um, you know, again, it, you do whatever your sellers say to do, you know, if they're telling you something like that, they probably should go to market and it's not for everybody. You know, it, the last thing I would want is for a seller to say, what if, and I tell them that over and over and over, right. The people who are selling off market, they're probably doing it for reasons like, um, uh, a closing date that most buyers don't want, or they have other reasons that are more important to them. So the conversation is what's, mo what's most important to you right now. I'll go get that for you or I'll try. Um, would you ever be willing to, to script that with me? Like if someone would say that, would you do that if I was the seller and you were the agent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, Nikolai, I just don't know about this whole off market. You know, everyone keeps talking about houses are just flying off the market, getting multiple offers. I'm not sure what the benefit would be. Um, you know, this probably isn't for you. Um, I would love to see your house go on the open market because it would be a lot of fun, frankly, uh, to have offers pour in. So it's a different philosophy. We're going to take a look at what we agree together is the market value of your home. And we're going to price it to maximize the exposure and the attention that it gets, right? Um, the only reason I think you should go off market is if there's some other reason that that's important to you. So if you have the patience, if you don't mind us taking uh, pictures, if you don't mind people coming through your home and ha us having some open houses, then maybe going active is the right move for you. Yeah. I, so, I mean, I guess you're right. It was one where I don't want a ton of people. Um, but is there any way to get multiple offers when it's an off market property? Uh, we certainly can. We, now, I don't know the difference between going active and having multiple offers with off market. So that's where I think there's a little bit of a hybrid in there that I don't know if it completely serves either side. Um, that if you're going to have multiple offers and multiple people through the home, why not just maximize the exposure and let everybody in the home at that point? Um, because what I feel is maybe not fair to those people that are coming in through the home is if you're not going to pick one of them and you're actually going to go active anyway, I feel like it was maybe you pulled the football out in front of them and that, you know, like, uh, it, it just wasn't, um, a full transparent opportunity. Okay. Awesome. Um, what I liked about, and you guys can pipe in on this, he, he immediately said, maybe it's not for you. 
right? If you say that to a seller, the seller is also going to be like, well, what do you mean? It's not for me. Right. So then he, then he was allowed to tell them why and what the options were and they get to choose from there. You did. That was great. Yeah. And, and believe me, the goal is not to sell it off market. You know, that's easy, but the last thing I want is a headache on the other side. So I make sure that they want to sell it off market for a set price and I show them everything that they will get. But I, I'm not out here trying to force the off market. I'll be honest, um, there's a lot of benefits for an agent on an off market deal. It's if done correctly and you do your, your work up front, it can be the most hassle free transaction you'll have. And the timeline with your buyer or seller is shorter. That's great. It's great for everybody. Right. But first and foremost, what's most important to the seller? I'm going to get you all that maybe in plus a little bit more, you know, and what's what's important to the buyers. I'm going to make a miracle happen for you. I'm going to get you a home where you've already missed out on. Um, I don't know. Like, I'll tell you guys, it, I actually uh, signed a buyer this morning that was not happy with their agent because they missed out on 10 homes. And my past clients said, well, you need to work with Nikolai. He found us this home is the third one we saw it was off market. You know, it's that the hustle will, will win in this scenario. Shannon, do you have any, um, anything to add on kind of what your last year and what it looks like right now for you and off markets on buyers and sellers? Well, yeah, um, it's, I've sold a few off market, um, on both ends of it. Um, I, I think that, you know, what it all comes down to is really the presentation of it all. Like I was thinking about that as these questions are coming up, like concerns or what do you do with this? It's all in how you present it. Right. And so I think it's asking good questions from both the buyer and the seller. And so I think just that role play that you did is, I think the first question is, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Like, what's the ideal scenario for you, you know, sellers in this market? So I just sold one that was off market and it really um, was ideal for these sellers because, you know, they have three kids, they're all home, homeschool, getting the house ready feels overwhelming. And then getting everybody out of the house for showings, you know, it, it's that whole package, right? And they're working from home. So it just really made sense. And so the question was, what's that number that would prevent you from putting this house on the market? What are the terms, you know? And sometimes they don't always know, right? And so you have to say, you know, and somebody else asked the question about, um, I think the, the question was, well, you know, what do you do if the buyer comes back and they didn't do the inspection because you told them not to? Well, we would never tell a buyer not to do an inspection, right? What we would say is, is that, you know, we, I guess what I say to my buyers is I would never tell you not to do an inspection, but I can tell you that your competition will not do an inspection. So how do you want to proceed? Right? Yeah. And so sometimes they have to lose out on a few before you know, and everybody says, oh, I'll never drop my inspection, right? Well, after well and which, lost pain, which pain's greater, losing the house or not having the inspection? Which, what, you know, what's their threshold on both? Well, and then that just leads you into a much deeper conversation, right? Because um, it's funny to me that a buyer, they won't drop their inspection, right? But they'll cover an endless amount of inspection gap or appraisal gap, Right. How many times have we ever seen an inspection come up where it's uh, they have to do thirty thousand dollars in work? Very rarely. Yeah. They'll you know, but they'll have sky's the limit for the appraisal gap. So I think it's just on the presentation and just kind of running through different scenarios. Almost in a way, it's like role playing with your clients. So you know, what if you found out that you know you moved in and it cost fifteen thousand dollars for a new sewer line? How do you feel about it? Oh, you're still glad you got the house? Well, then let's get the house. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm kind of role-playing the scenarios of what, what are most of the worst things that could happen, right? Sewer line, furnace replacement, you know, like that kind of stuff, you kind of role-play with them. And is that something that would make you regret the purchase? Right. 
do you have a checklist or a, a sheet when you're talking about presentation? You mentioned it's how you present it. Um, I know Nikolai had mentioned a, a little bit about, you know, kind of making sure that things are written down. Um, do you have a checklist that you go through of the benefits of on market versus off market or, you know, with a buyer and a seller? Do, I mean, I guess it's open to either one of you or if anybody does. I guess I don't just because I think that every scenario is different and it depends yeah. on what the needs are of the seller and of the buyer. For sure. You know, and, and, I, and I think too, the other part of it is, is, you know, some sellers, they want to go through, like, honestly, I think it's their ego. They want to go through getting the house ready, having the photos, it being out there, it presenting the frenzy of the showings. They want to go through that. They want to see that. And so that's why I think too, it's about asking the questions, you know, um, you know, what is important to you? What does this look like for you? How, how, how would you write this story? You know? I like that. All right, does anybody else have any questions or anything to add to this discussion? Can I add something about the inspection piece? Yeah. So I've done a few off-market deals. Um, they've gone really smooth. And I've been on the buy side primarily, or only for the off market, actually. I wish I would have gotten my sellers into off market because I think that we all know it's a seller's market and they read about it and they're excited, but then they got so nervous that there was so much hand holding while we had it on the market with all the exposure it really wasn't for their anxiety levels. It didn't result in this awesome experience, no matter how much handholding I did. So that was something that I like saw, like there's too much news out there about what's happening while their house is on the market, that if the offer doesn't come right away, it freaks them out. You know what I mean? And it takes a few days. You want like a weekend exposure, but they think it should be done by Thursday night, you know? So that was something I, you know, thought through too and to talk to them about that. But then on the inspection piece, you know, you just have to let your clients know if you get an inspection in an off market, it's like a privilege and it's just an opportunity to get to know your house. And then on the sell side, this is like a test run. We don't have any days on market. We're not going to get stigmatized if the buyer walks away because of an inspection. And we might actually have the opportunity to fix the problem, right? Before we even go on and maximize our price then to the open market too. So it's kind of a good deal for both if both agree on an inspection, you know? That's awesome. Um, I like that you brought up anxiety level. Um, I think anxiety in general on both sides is a topic that, you know, us as agents uh, across the board, how is everyone dealing with that with off or on markets, right? Um, and maybe those that are doing a lot of off markets, does the anxiety level seem to lower or at least you can have a better handle on it versus when, when it's something's on the market? I would love any opinions on that or how to handle that. or nobody knows how to handle it. And we're all just panicked with every one of our clients, either one. <laughs> Again, I just, I think it comes down to just the conversation and just walking through different scenarios with our clients, you know? So if they're freaked out about something in particular, I'll just like try to present it in a way and bring it to life. So if this happens, then what? What are the options? What are the solutions? You know? Yeah. I guess, you know, I tend to be more of a solutions-based person. So I guess that's where I'll stay focused. If, if this does happen, well, then these are our options, right? You know, I think it's just constantly communicating. For sure. One thing too that I wanted to say um, that I thought of that you, I, it was in relation to something you said, Katie, but um, I 
we sold a house, uh, we were representing the sellers off market and the buyers wanted to do the inspection, which we're fine with. But what I said to them was, um, what we decided, the sellers and I decided was to go back to them and say, okay, do the inspection. But if you, it's as is, and if you decide you do not want to buy it, we do not want any requests. That's we'll fair just, off market, right? Then we'll sign a cancellation and we do not, we, we do not want any requests. And the reason for that is because then there's no skin off our nose, right? If they decide something came up, you know, like they discovered that there was asbestos tiles or whatever. Um, what we don't know, we don't have to disclose and we're going on the market and likely we'll get an offer that doesn't have an inspection. I like that. That's awesome. Um, when it's a buyer's market, uh, will you still recommend the sellers to use an off-market sale? Is a question from Steve. Well, again, I don't know that I would ever recommend it. I think, again, it's in the presentation and then the sellers decide what is the best option for them. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of both of you have been saying it's not necessarily recommended, it's an option, right? It's an option and, and they get to pick what's best for them. If, if I could maybe drive home a point here, um, one of the things that I was really hoping to get across was if everybody made the off market part of their initial presentation and presented it correctly as just an option, not for everybody, I'm not you know spending a lot of time on it, but it, it's a little bit suspect if, if it all of a sudden comes up in a couple of weeks after they signed, and then they start to think, well, what are you trying to do to me? You know, there's a trust level there. You, you have to be all transparent from the get go. And I, that's where I think some, some sellers or some listing agents might get tripped up. They say, well, I don't, I never really had that conversation to that level with them before. And I can understand how it's a little bit awkward to have after the fact, because it's a little bit of a mental hurdle to get over, you know, totally different direction. So if everyone could maybe talk about it sooner, I think it would help you if you ever did have that conversation down the road. Yeah, so you're, su I mean, you're suggesting is just part, I mean, it's just part of your listing presentation, no matter what. Yeah. It's it's not okay. even, it's just always in there. It, it's in there and that, and just so they have all the information so they can make their decision. And that's how I present it. I just want you to know everything. I want you to know all your options. I'm gonna tell you everything up front. I'll tell you some success stories and. And then we'll talk about what's best for you after I learn about what's most important for you. Well, and Nikolai, what I hear is, is you're selling services, right? We all are. Here's my menu of services. One of them could be off market. It's up to you. Which package do you want? That's it. Yep. That's it. I just want to have as many tools as possible. And uh, you hired me to be your advisor. We're going to work through it. We're going to figure it out. I'm, you might be asking for something I've never even heard of before. I'm all about it. You know, let's, let's see if we can get it done for you. Do you do that same thing with the buyer's appointment when you are setting the expectation of, of going into purchase, right? You go through your normal buyer's presentation in that, do you already set the expectation of what an off market property looks like, or do you just touch base on that? Like kind of touch point on that being an option. Because you went into detail about, you know, if we go and make an offer on this off market, this is kind of what it looks like. Do you go through that right at, right up front or do you, you know, just kind of touch a little bit and then go into it before you look at the property? Um, I don't think that talking, especially with first time home buyers, I don't think talking about how dire the market is out there is really going to serve anybody. I mean, you can set expectations, but everybody that they know is already telling them. So I don't really spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, if they ask, I'm, I'm all about it. But I don't think that the buyer presentation is the time to talk about all the negatives and, and bad things that could happen. Because quite frankly, I'm not, you know, I'd rather say, don't worry about it. I win in multiples all the time, you know. No, not the not the multiples. I'm talking about no. setting up the, the off-market option for them. Do you talk about that? But that's part of it, right? Yep. So why would I even be interested in an off-market property well, let's look at what this whole pathway looks like, right? So this is the normal pathway and, oh, there's an, there's an opportunity to maybe find what you're looking for off market, but we'll talk about that, you know, when the time comes, you know, gotcha. I, don't, I, I, I would on the buy side, 
you, what you don't want to do is rush them into an off-market property when they don't know the market and they don't know what the opportunity is because they could squander it. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give it to somebody who appreciates it and let's get you up to speed first. I want you to be completely 100% comfortable with the whole concept because it's a lot of trust. You know, at that point, they are hinging everything on what I say and I want them to make the decision. If that I could add to, go ahead. If I got one point to add to that, with when we're working with our buyers, one thing that we do when we're doing our initial consult is is, and we're trying, we're asking them to sign the buyer up contract, is that we say, look, we're going to be searching MLS, and that's our first priority, where we're or our first uh, tactic into finding you a home. But when you sign the buyer rep contract, it also gives me the ability to network on your behalf. And sometimes we do find properties that aren't on the market yet or a pre-listing and we can present those to you but if you sign the contract today that allows me to kind of add that additional tool and we'll talk more about that if we do find a property that fits you know that's not mls and the pros and the cons to that but right now it's just important that you sign the contract so that we can uh you know potentially find these other properties for you uh, if i could piggyback on that you're right i i have said that where i've said um I have had success finding off-market properties, and I generally try to match my motivation to my clients. And the people who sign with me get first opportunity, right? And they get what I'm saying. So on the listing side, you brought up a good point about trust, right? A good point about trust in you taking your buyers out to multiple properties. Uh, Shannon, you might have uh, some feedback on this. When you have an off-market property, do you ask the buyer's agent how many properties that that buyer's seen? Because um, I think that's a really, uh, it's a good point of if this is the first house they've seen, it's off-market, what kind of feelings are they going to have about it? Do you ask uh, yeah. that question? Absolutely. I ask how many properties they've lost. Okay. Yeah. Or if they have lost any properties. Because I know if they've lost 10 properties, this is going to be much smoother. Mm -hmm. Right? Or if they're even prepared to see a property that's off market that hasn't been staged or even yeah. decluttered. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's a super good question to ask because it's going to give you a lot of information. And really, I think give you a better idea of how that transaction could possibly go. I would be really nervous about somebody who hasn't, who's just getting started looking at an off market. Yeah, I've said to my buyers, um, I don't, I, I like, I, I would love to bring you an off market deal. I don't think you're bruised enough yet. You know, like it's, it's tough out there. And I, I think we need to learn the market a little bit more. Um, and hopefully it's not that, oh, I want you to miss out on three or four before I'll give you the good stuff. But you know, you have to navigate that. Okay. We have about six minutes. Anybody else have questions that either weren't answered or, or something that they'd like to add? I can add something. I'm um, brand new, but I got, um, I had buyers that lost out on an offer for an open house I was running. And so then I went to the homeowners association and I said, look, I have buyers that only want this neighborhood. Is anyone interested in letting um, these people see their house? And so there were two different homes in the neighborhood that allowed us to come in. Um, one turned into uh, the negotiation where we're working on it now and they're under contract. The other one turned into a listing for me. Um, so, I talked to Jim, our broker, and he basically had told me when I went in for the listing appointment, actually it wasn't a listing appointment, it was more of a um, before my buyers were gonna see the house. I gave them three options. I said, you know, I can do the showing compensation agreement. My buyers can look at your house one time and that's 2.7%. I said, I can represent both sides and that's 4% or you can go on the market if they're not interested in your house and you can list with me and that's 6%. And um, they chose to let my buyers come in, but then they also chose to um, sign the paperwork for the listing agreement. So, but now we're under contract with a for sale by owner. Um, and he said he's represented by an attorney, but yet we have not heard from the attorney the entire time. Um, we have a title agency. We still haven't heard from their title agency. Uh, we have an inspection tomorrow. I'm very nervous about, um, but, it's very weird working directly with the homeowner instead of uh, another agent. So deal with that. 
um, could I offer up a, um, a scenario that, that worked for me when I did something similar to door knock? I said, look, you're for sale by owner. I, yeah, that's great. You know, you want to save money or whatever your, your motivation is. Um, why don't you just let me do both sides and I'll put that extra 1.3 on top of the purchase price, which essentially gets the sellers to pay for it. And then I just handle everything. You know, um, if both parties agree to the dollars that were, you know what I mean? It's a, the, the for sale by owners, they just, they think they have everything and they just want to win, but it, the, stuff like that happens. Yeah, he was a really tough uh, person to deal with, still is. And he was like, I don't need representation. My best friend's an attorney. I, I don't need you to represent me. I'm only willing to pay the 2.7% and I'll let your buyers in. But we've just been, it's been kind of a headache ever since. So I'm hoping it goes to closing. We'll see. Yeah. So, uh, One other question is, uh, and this will probably be the last, one of the last questions is, how do you find off-market homes? How have you been finding those? Nikolai? Uh, well, I start with, um, so I have my buyer's needs in front of me. I start with agents that I know that do a lot of work in those areas. It's, it's funny, I, uh, his whole mining of the data, I'm like, yeah, that's way smarter than just calling a bunch of agents. Um, that's what I was doing. I, I had buyers that were looking for a specific property like in outstate and I would just look up sold properties in that area and uh, similar you know, styles to what they were looking for. And I would just call agents. Um, you know, if that's a lot of work, but I also have my go-to agents that I know just do a ton of business in those areas. And, uh, I may have even done off market deals with them in the past. So I know that they're open to it. Um, and then of course, you know, we have our three tools or, you know, the multiple tools to find them, but a lot of it is just hustle and making calls and creating relationships. And I think that's what the underlying theme is of this is we've got a tremendous network with just the Butler group and uh, pretty solid agents in here and um, just start getting to know them and getting those relationships going. I think that's a great point too, Nikolai. Uh, I, I know you and I talked and you were like, I don't even know some of the people in, in, in this, in a particular office, right? Um, are we utilizing uh, the relationships that we have with, with each other too? You know, are you utilizing the relationships within your office uh, as well as, you know, kind of throughout the offices? Cause I know you're really great at, at calling and, and asking or having buyer needs uh, and calling different agents. Um, you do a really good job at that. All right, any last questions? All right, well, I wanna thank uh, Shannon, Nikolai, uh, and everyone that came on here. I hope that you guys all took something away from it. Um, and if you have any questions, I think this is also gonna be sent out as well um, as a recording to, to all the offices, um, but let us know. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Amy. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.